What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. I'm your host, Pat Finley. I'm a lead master certified technician at General Parts Group, as well as a certified special trainer. Our goal is to shine a light on what we believe to be one of the most interesting and rewarding industries a field service technician can work in. We love the work we do, and we are glad you're here listening to this podcast. In this episode, we have Brian Sanders back, and he is talking about coming to the dark side. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Jeez. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. I am joined tonight by two very special people. Uh, everyone knows both of these guys, actually. Uh, I think this is Brian's third time on here, maybe, and uh, Jason's in the house tonight. I think Rich probably still doesn't have internet. He's been kind of quiet, so I'm not sure what he's been up to, but uh, and he had some pretty bad weather down his way. But first, let's get into it. This episode is sponsored by Viper HVACR products. Did you know that Viper's NSF registered coil cleaners are a must have for kitchen maintenance? No rinsing required. Plus, Viper's HVACR products were created by technicians for technicians, ensuring top notch quality. Viper believes in performance without hazardous ingredients. So, thanks to our friends over at Refrigeration Technologies for making this possible. So, what is going on, guys? Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> working my tail off jason uh how's that email after this storm blew through is that uh blowing up pretty bad there yeah it's uh my area wasn't as bad you know for 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 all the people there's a lot of loss there was loss of life there's a lot of damage to homes um i've been living in florida almost all my life and uh yeah um, it was a pretty bad one a pretty bad one a lot of a lot of damage and loss of life and whatnot so um, I'm feeling for a lot of those people. My my lights flickered. Um, I think after I went to bed, the kids stayed up because there was no school. So they were like, yeah, the lights turned off for like three minutes. So they had to turn everything back on and whatnot. So I was like, that's all I heard about it. Um, I thought all the damage and whatnot was up north because uh, I don't watch the news. I'm just busy with work. And then I just found out recently that it's, it hit up. It damaged the coast all up you know, the coast of Florida before it hit. Um, so it's bad everywhere for the most part, coastland areas, and then the direct path into, uh, into the panhandle and up. So yeah, it's doing good. It stormed pretty bad here. I was surprised. Um, we had a lot of wind, like it's a few, I think maybe a tornado or two or something popped up. It was kind of weird, like this far up here, it was pretty bad. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, thoughts and prayers, everybody out there and, you know, do what you guys can to, you know, be safe. So, Brian, what's new, buddy? Well, I uh, everybody knows I switched over to the food service industry to the dark side. To the dark, to the dark side, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm using I'm using the force now, but uh, work uh, work with uh, Matt Brunty and his brother Jared uh, at Red LLC, and uh, couldn't be happier. Great group of guys great company culture and uh yeah i they take care of me and i can do is take care of them take care of the customers yeah we had matt on a while back and he was a really good guest he um he has that you know uh employee you know technician first you know customer first mentality and everything's gonna fall everything else fall into place and uh i think he'd be really cool to work for he seemed like a really good guy really down to earth and he really cares about his technicians and his customer. And, you know, if you, if you do that, that's a recipe for success in my book. Yeah. Yeah, he is it definitely, definitely that way. Sweet. So you are learning cooking equipment. That's probably a little bit of a change for you, right? Very much of a change. Uh, I mean, I knew it was going to be dirtier, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Um, it's helping my ADD out a little bit because I'm having to learn a whole new skill set. So I don't really have time to dwell upon things. It's just like, I, I got to learn this equipment. Yeah. But you know, I got a lot, the, all the guys I work with and stuff, I've got all their numbers. If I have a question, you know, I just, I just call them up. I'm like, I don't want you to tell me the answer. Uh, where is this part located at on this fryer? <laughs> I know what it's supposed to read. I just, I'm trying to straighten up the learning curve a little bit and stuff like that. It's amazing 
to me, I mean, you you probably haven't. I mean, you've been doing it close to three months now, but the commonality of parts from like a furnace to an oven, like a rooftop unit to an oven, it's like the same burners, the same igniters, the same ignition module, the same gas valve. Like the in shot burners you'll see in a rooftop unit are the same ones in a South Bend or Garland oven. I'm like, this is insane. It's the same exact burner, same control voltage. Yeah. yeah. It's it, if you can fix an, a rooftop unit or you know a, a package unit or you know a gas furnace, you can fix a gas oven. Yeah, just a different style of temp control, but you know it, it's it's heating the cavity to three fifty instead of your house to seventy degrees. I mean, same principle. Yeah, and I always tell Matt, I'm like, listen, I'm not going to call and ask you how to do something. I'm going to call you and. If I ask you a question, it's going to be like, where can I find this information? Where can I find the sequence of operation and that sort of thing? I said, because if I call and ask you how how am I going to fix this, uh, I'm not going to learn. Uh, I, I'm going to be cutting my legs off, kind of. So, Yeah, and that's my teaching style. When someone calls, I may know the answer, but I don't give them the answer. I give them what to check. Hey, check voltage here, check pressure here. And most of the time they don't call me back because they figured it out from just the things I tell them. I think it's a a far better uh, way of teaching somebody to teach them how to check for something versus just to tell them how to fix it. Because when you, I mean, let's be honest, you, you tell them what's wrong with it, they're going to call you every time when they answer. They're not going to ever learn to do it. I mean, what's the old analogy? Like teach a man to fish, feed him for life, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for the day or whatever it is. I mean, I'm terrible at that kind of stuff, but you know, that's more Jason's line. You said it right though. No, oh, nice, nice. See, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> and it, it's funny how how the saying in HVAC and refrigeration carries over to hot side. You know, RTFM. Read the fantastic manual. That's <laughs> it's. I was Jared, uh, Matt's brother. He knows I'm big on manual, so we were doing that condenser change out. Oh, it's been about a month ago. And, and I'm standing there because it was a long day and I'm standing there. And all of a sudden he smacks something into my chest and I'm like, what? And I look down and it's the, it's the manual for the condenser unit. He's like, here, he said, I know you like to read. So I was like, Oh, you did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. When I first started, man, we had shelves on our vans just for books, just for manuals. And thank God I don't have to carry those books anymore. Cause now I have more parts than I ever have, but, um, knowing where to find that manual online is a huge part of my success. Uh, I'm sure you're the same way. I, everyone's like, how do you remember all this? I'm like, I don't remember it. I just know where to find it. That's, that's, that's the best part of it. And, and a tool that I've really taken to is Google drive. If I first time I work on a piece of equipment, I get the model number. I search for the manual, uh, the IOM and the service manual. I download that to Google Drive. Then I make sure I make that available offline because in West Virginia, sometimes we don't have cell service. And then, you know, I have that on the iPad so I can pull that up and, you know, figure figure what's going what's going on. That way, when I call tech support, they're like, do you check? Yes, yeah, so I checked this. I said, I've looked through the service manual and I've went through all those steps and I'm still kind of lost in Usually you gain a little bit of respect from them from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I've had bosses that um like people will call him like your guy's looking at a website or he's on his phone or he's looking at a manual. And my boss is like, Would you rather him just like struggle or would you rather them like try to find information to fix it? Most time people are like, Oh, why well, didn't think of it that way? Well, I don't call the the tech support guide out when I realize he's reading the same page I'm reading. Oh yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Tech support, man, that's a that's a rough job. I mean, you have to give it to those guys because they deal with everybody from people who have been doing this for 20 years that are seasoned and are good at their job and are, they've went through every step they need to go through. And they're going to the guy like, oh, I don't know how to turn my meter on. Oh, they just gave me this. They just sent me out here. I just started today. <laughs> dude, it, I, I'd be like, who do you work for? I'd be like, hold on. I'd be calling their boss, dude. I'd be hot. <laughs> <laughs> So the restaurant scene, is that a big change for you? It is. Um, I'd say the, the biggest change of all working in restaurants is 
learning how to work in a space where you don't have space. Yeah. Yeah. It's tight, man. Um, you know, I used to do a lot of McDonald's work and they're pretty much two hallways. Like if two people are standing back to back, you, you can't see daylight between them. And, um, you know, you got to pull a fryer out and you're working on the back and the, and the wiring or a high limit or something. And like, like you climb back there, you're like, okay, drag it back, you know, pull the fryer back as far as you can and just kind of trap yourself back there and, you know, do what you got to do so they can still work around you. Um, restaurant work can be crazy. You know, not everybody's, not every kitchen's a school where, you know, there's five feet between the piece of equipment and the table. And, you know, it, it, there's a wide variety of what we get into. Yeah, it's funny what you're talking about, pushing it back, you know, pushing the piece of equipment back in. I had to do that yesterday, changing out a uh, a pan heating element on a uh, Randell unit. And it was right in the busiest, their busy time. It was right at dinner time, but it was an overtime approved call. And I was asked if I go hit it. And I'm like, yes. Yep. Do they know I'm coming? Yes, they do. So I'm like, yeah, cool. So I told the girl, I'm like, listen, you're you're going to be you're going to be kind of cramped for just a second. I said, I need to, I need to waddle my big butt back behind this unit. And I said, once I get set it back, set back down, you can slide that forward. And that's, I mean, I was only back here for 25 minutes, but you know, I communicated with him. I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna have to push this out a little bit. I'm on my way out. And then, you know, got it done. We all, it's taken care of now, but yeah, it's, uh, you learn different ways of coping with with stuff <laughs> yeah yeah it's wild that always kills me over time approved i'm like dude it's six o'clock do you really want me taking up real estate on your line and you know most time they'll hey we're 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 down for it come you know we'll figure it out i'm like oh boy yeah those are always my worst my uh, worst calls when i see overtime approved and it's some fast food restaurant or some busy new restaurant i'm like why am i doing this yeah <laughs> you're over it's overtime approved and you're down with me coming but are you really down with me coming do you really realize what is going to entail when i have to start working on this piece of equipment because don't 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 come up to me and say oh you know i, I made you per made this perfectly clear I, I kept that line of communication open so <laughs> Yeah, I, I, Friday night overtime calls. If I can avoid it, I can. I'd be like, "Hey, I'll get there tomorrow at six in the morning when nobody's there." You know, what time do you get there? I'll come first thing in the morning. I always try that tactic. You know, like, "Hey, I don't want to be in New Island on Friday. Can you survive Friday night?" I'll, you know, I can come out tomorrow morning. It gets you going. Um, luckily, most of the time they'll go for that versus you know have me come out on a Friday at six thirty, seven o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've noticed with a lot of this cooking equipment, the I guess the engineers that design this, this is one of the things they taught in engineering school is to pack 10 pounds of crap in a five pound box. You probably it's, seen nothing yet. <laughs> There's some nah. Yo, let me chime in on some of this. <laughs> in regards <laughs> to the engineering, I went to a couple tech, a uh, couple manufacturer schools while I was a technician. And the explanation I got, and I won't say the manufacturer is that <clears throat> some of these, these companies, these chains, McDonald's, they got that type of pull where they say, hey, listen, this is the space that we're giving you. These are the dimensions. This is what we want it to do. So, for instance, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a machine that dispensed juice, and you could have two flavors in it, right? And it, it's nice, tight. It does all these things. It has, a, a, it has all this stuff in it, but if you have to change out the encoder where the water and the the product mixes, you pretty much deglove your hand by trying to pull this encoder out of this space along the side of these these uh, stainless steel brackets, right? And when I went to the school, I asked, I was like, "Well, why why is this not, you know, technician friendly?" And they're like, "Well, they were given the the company who's asking for this gives us this size space, this much, and we have to make it work. We try to make it." The last thing taken into account is serviceability. And it's one of the things that I, I've always looked at whether or not I have to work. On, well, I always have to work on it's not whether or not, but it's like I got to figure it out. And that's I've been very resilient in everything I do because 
when I first got out of school and I started at my first gig, that company, I did everything, but they weren't really spending a lot of money. So it was like, figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. And then when I went from that company into working for a service company and I was dealing on these larger pieces of equipment, I'm finding all this equipment that's over-engineered. And I don't think we're taking in, uh, technicians are taken into account when it comes to how these things are designed. And then we have to deal with it when we get there. Right. They're like, we, they're like, we know you can figure it out. You know, it's just like, man, you're, you're, you're killing me. So, mm-hmm. you know, in regards to what, what it takes to be in fast food to, you know, I remember working at my first gig for three years and it was fast paced. It's a fast food place, uh, casual dining, fast dining. And then I got to my service company and they're even a bigger chain of, of restaurants. And we were doing um, what ride alongs cause we would try to hire people and then they wouldn't work out. So we're like, you know what, let's do an OJ OJT day where you, you know, I did one on the Saturday. I remember years ago and these guys are sitting there. They're trying to work on the fryer. Fries are falling on them. They're getting sp- spackled with some um, grease from when they drop the, the product in the fryer. And they're just like, frick this you know what in the world i'm like you, you i was like that's why i put you there because i need to know if you can handle the fact that it's crazy around you on these cook lines they need to do what they need to do stuff foods flying everywhere and it really does take it does take a a, a level of patience and um how you say um collaboration with the business that you you know they need to continue to make money and in regards to overtime you know i'm going I'm going through something with that now where there's more business than there are um than there are qualified technicians to do the work so in regards to being called out on a friday night my advice to to restaurants is if you put in a call on a friday even if it's 11 in the morning when you open or whatnot put overtime approved if you want a technician to come out and the technician that's actually the on-call technician, because I've been finding where technicians come out, they don't put overtime approved. You didn't get the OT tech. You got a tech. That tech could only get so far. He ain't trying to go. He or she is not trying to go back to their warehouse. <laughs> They're not trying to work the weekend. But what do they tell the store? You know what? I'll be back tomorrow. They're not the dispatcher. You know, and, I, and the, the advice I give a lot of restaurants is, hey, just put it as OT. If, you know, they'll call you. And if you if they can get out of it, they'll get out of it. And, you know, my thing is a. Uh, uh, on call manager was telling the stores, Hey, the guy can come out, but there's, you know, there's no resources after four o'clock or five o'clock on a weekend. So there's no parts houses, unless there's going to be a fee, there's no resources to verify anything. The technician might be coming out and there's a 50, 50 chance. They might be able to get you going or not. And you'll still have to wait till Monday and it's port to port from when they left their house to when they got back. Um, but you know, I'm rambling. Uh, but yeah, all those things I was listening to you guys talk about, I wanted to touch on cause it just bane of my existence and my current. So, yeah, I mean, it's great points though. Cause you, you bring a whole, you, you know, both sides of it now. You've been mm-hmm. a for a while now. You've been a technician, you've been a manager, you've been, you know, in the hospitality side of it. So you've seen like every single side of what's going on and you, I mean, you understand it. Like you, when you were on call, it sucks, man. You, as soon as you come home, your phone rings. Like you come home from work, you're like, do I take the my worst boots time. Off? Like, do I take my boots off? I'm like, you know, do I do this? Like, your kid has a game or something. You're like, and you know, you're like, as soon as you, there's something you want to do, you know, you're getting called out. It's just, it's just not a question of if, but when. And uh, I mean, so I mean, I, I try to get out calls. I mean, I don't do anything that I think is wrong. You know. Yeah. And, a customer calls on a Friday night at eight o'clock. Their ice machine's down. Well, your ice machine's going to be down tomorrow at eight p.m. Even if I get it, even if I get it fixed tonight, at, yeah. I, I mean, it takes twenty four hours to fill up, and that's if I can get it fixed. I mean, like, can I come out in the morning? And most of them are like, yeah, you can come out in the morning. I'm like, oh, thank God, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I can get out of it, I can. And in my the last the last two jobs, the service companies I work for, they're like, it's four hours. You got four hours to respond. Or four hours to get there. It's kind of a fine line whether the the P the P one, which is a four hour emergency, mm-hmm. is either you need to respond within four hours or arrive within four hours. It's not always feasible, but you try. And if you hit them with those three things, there's no guarantee I can fix it. There is no resources from the manufacturer, and there is no parts house open without an, an, a, a substantial charge. And on top of that, a lot of the technician or a lot of the people that work the counters at uh, parts houses. I don't know how true it is because I've gotten I, I I can feel how irritated they are when I call them at uh-huh. 10 
one, two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, hey, I need a compressor of this type to come see for this type of unit. You know, this one's single phase, but I need one for a three phase. Um, and they're like, well, I'm driving three hours away. When I get to the shop, I'll be able to log into the computer and find out if we even have it in the place. I don't know how true that is. You know, Mike, they're like, oh, well, my phone's not working, so I have to go in there. They, they say everything they can to get out of it. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and it's just like, hey, no resources. You know, it, you know what? And the whole thing about making sure you put OT for the for the store, the restaurants who do want service over the weekend, it, it, even if it's Friday morning. And I tell them, I was like, and I got this from Rich Malachi. I seen a video years ago where he, <laughs> I don't know how frustrated he was, but Rich was like, hey, listen. We're all busy. We're doing the best we can. My guys aren't idling at the corner waiting for your phone call. Every day, st everyone starts with a full plate every day. So Friday, mm -hmm. Friday, everyone wants to call in an emergency all day on a Friday because they want their stuff fixed over the weekend. I don't care if it's first thing in the morning. You put OT. Why? Do you, no, you don't want to pay it. Well, it's during the business hours. They should be able to come. No, we're all, they're all busy. They got work. Put OT and at the very least, the person that they connect you with will be the on-call person. So when they do say, I'll be back tomorrow, I can come tomorrow, that is actually the person. You can actually harass them the rest of the weekend. But if you don't put OT and you get the regular guy who wants to finish his day because he was on OT, he was on uh, he was on call last weekend, that's just the best advice I can get. And that's something I've learned in the last several months. So. <laughs> that's a good point, a good side to it, man. Uh, yeah, on-call sucks. Unfortunately, it's part of what we do, but it's part of the beast. I mean, restaurants are open every day of the year, pretty much. Yeah. So, Brian, let me ask you: What's your? So you've been doing this three months. Mm -hmm. What are you? What do you feel? I won't ask you what brand. What what type of equipment are you starting to feel the most comfortable on? So, let's say out of the three types of equipment, and let me tell you what. So, I'm comfortable on fryers. I have my, I have what I like about fryers. I'm comfortable on holding cabinets. I'm comfortable on convection, conventional convection ovens. Um, and then when I first started, I kind of struggled with everything, but I really liked working on dish machines, you know, and then I got over to the convection ovens. What do you, and the three months you've been doing food equipment, what, what's your favorite piece of equipment that you think is the less pain in the rear end? Convection ovens. Yeah. They're pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah, they're 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 not bad. Um, us, like I was telling Pat, I'm not ashamed to say this. For whatever reason, right now, fryers, just I don't know why. I'm just I I know I know it can do it. It's just they they intimidate me just a little smidge. I don't know if it's the hot oil or what it is. I don't know, but Fair enough. I'm working I'm working through that. I and it has, it has nothing to do with they're usually the dirtiest piece of equipment because yeah, I I don't I don't care about that. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily fryers or you just got tossed into like the most complex fryers to start off with. Like, you did, you did, <laughs> Are there digital screens on it? Because that's a thing. <laughs> Big LA three thirty. So is, he's at a he's at a Mac. So <laughs> he's not having fun. <laughs> I have my favorites at Max. Uh, I have my favorites and I have my not so favorites. I've been assured by the not so favorite that they've cleaned up their act and they've made it more technical friendly and I won't drop names, but oh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing those when I go to hopefully go to NAF and chill with you, Pat. Yeah, they, um, uh, they've they made a big change in the, uh, the touch screens. There's so and um, we I'm more concerned about. Access, uh, accessing the contactors and everything, the control boards. Oh, yeah, Put it somewhere where I'm not on my back for five hours. Yeah, they've made some changes. Um, and some of the nurses are even cooler. So the gas ones are uh, gas ones going to be pretty sweet. So they've got a new burner, a new blower, a new uh, they got gas solenoids versus gas valve. Um, they can actually, a uh, full pot can actually, when it goes into cool mode, it can fire off one side versus both sides. They just kind of heat a little bit to maintain some temperature in there so it'll, it'll actually rotate back and forth left and right burner on a full pot yeah. really oh yeah and it's um they did away with the enrichment tube um so it's just a straight igniter and flame sensor now and um they've got a metal burner instead of the ceramic burner so there's no more burner cracks oh it's it's they're sweet and we can go on for hours i, I gotta quit talking about it because i'll get lost in the in the weeds because i'm excited get lost in the sauce get lost in the sauce brian's like i don't 
I don't know. I don't, you're coming out with new ones. No. <laughs> I don't mind the HPs. Um, they're not. They're not too bad. And I will say, out of all the major fryer companies out there, uh, HP Tech Support. At least the guys I've talked to have been super top notch. Like last time I was on the phone with him, like he he uh, he said, "Is this your phone number?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he said, "I'm gonna be sending some stuff." And he sent me like plumbing diagrams and highlighted the areas to look for and all that stuff. And I was like, "Dude, this is awesome!" I'm like, y "You know that this means the world to me." And he's like, that, "That's what I'm here for." That's awesome. HP. I love them. I'll be honest. Uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm partial. I've worked on the PTs and the FMs, but the HPs, they are very tech friendly. Their technical support is really good. Um, yeah. The, I mean, there's one guy that I'm not sure if he's there. It's been years, but he would be there at least 30 minutes before they're even open. So if you called like what, 730 and you picked a certain option, it would go to him because he would get there 30 minutes early if you, and it would get, the phones would get kicked to him. And that dude was super helpful, would send me diagrams, just like you're saying. Um, I, I, you know, their, their design, and I'm sure they'll come up with some fancy digital screen like everyone else, but that the, their whole kiss, keep it simple, stupid. I love the, you know, contactors right behind the controller, elements, super easy to change. It doesn't have to be, over engineered and super complicated. I'm, you know, you know, there's a different rhyme and reason why and and, and method to the madness why companies are over engineering mm -hmm. over engineering their equipment and whatnot. And it's just making it so hard. The fact that we're we have such a shortage in technicians uh, this day and age, and they're still mandating through Congress these all these changes. You know. For environmental purposes, of course, but they're they're making all these changes, all the you know, get rebates for going with this, this, and that. But the these parts, these computer boards, these thermistors, they come from another country. It's hard to get them. It, it, it's crazy. It's so complicated for the amount of people we have. I think the only thing that would reverse any of this, and this is a completely different topic, is if they bring back, you know, shop, you know, you know, woodwork and technical stuff, home ec, whatever, you know, some some real everyday things that we all do, you know, that will help this country turn around the, you know, the shortage and, 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 and stuff like that. And I'm excited if they ever do do that, man. I, I, I even tell my daughters, you know, Hey, check out blue collar. It is fun. My oldest daughter, she actually works for an, uh, a, a HVAC company residential and she's loving it. You know, she ended up there and it wasn't through my influence or anything, but when I found out, I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. So it's, it, they're really over-engineering things. And if HP continues to at least keep that base model, that's simple and does the job. I think they're, they're going to, they're going to be a favorite for a lot of technicians because this over-engineering and all the extra digital displays, you know, it just, you know, I, I work on them. I like them, but they're not necessary for every situation. So uh, yeah, it does and have, going to oh sorry Pat. Uh, HP does have a digital display now. I I've seen one in a Mac in a Mac and uh they had the digital fancy display on the rides on the mm -hmm. front, front but the protein in the back was still the old school like HP control and it was pretty sweet. But yeah, that front one was like I was like, that looks weird. Like, why is there just like an on off button and everything dark? And then you hit it and like it lights up. It's not like a full blown like L C D. Yeah, but it's like it's weird. It was cool. It's definitely a touch screen, but well, I'll see if I can get my hands on that. In um, I'm not sure if I'm going to Na uh, Natham yet because it's in Atlanta. I'm trying to work that out. If I do, I'm definitely sh going straight over to to those different manufacturers, and if they let me tear it apart, I will. If we get a, if we're there, we'll have a blast because I'll I'll just bring the camera and we'll just go around and film stuff, and everybody's booth. Everybody wants to show it off because. That's their show and tell, man. NAFM and NRA is. Yeah, know. I'll make it a point to go. Yeah, I'll, 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 my supervise, my uh, leadership at my, my location, my companies, they're not sure if I can or can't. So I just, you know, either way, I just, you know, I me, I'll take PTO and I'll go. <laughs> Don't bother me none. I'm literally working like three days in February. Yeah, because you're going, you're going all these <laughs> things. <laughs> Yo, February is a hot, that's a, a hot month for us. You know, if it's not Chicago and it's a cold month, but you know, yeah. that's a hot month for us and all the different things we want to do. It's cool. I mean, you know, I was just going to go like Wednesday through Thursday, 
in Orlando, but then I was like, I started talking and I uh, looked at American Panel, and they're like, they're not, they're not too far north of there. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I think we got going up there because I'm going to some HVAC school symposium. I was like, hey, I'm gonna try to hit up American Panel, see if I can go in there and you know maybe record some stuff or maybe get some content or have an episode recorded in there with some other team. And then uh, I got HVAC school symposium. We got HVAC tactical awards. We got AHR. And I was like, I was like screw it. I was like, I'm not gonna come back on Thursday and go to work on Friday. I was like, I'll just take the week. See, those are goals right there. You know, if you have, you have four. If you if you can earn up to four weeks of PTO, I would I would waste that whole four <laughs> weeks on conventions and industry related stuff. Yep, and then and I'll, then there's family vacations if there's any time left, of course. But yeah, you know. <laughs> then I'll, I'll burn a few days and yeah, for NRA, and then I'll start over. So they changed our policy. I'm only allowed to roll forty hours over, and then I get eight days the first year. <laughs> So I'm Man, like that might be something I need to introduce to my company. I'm cutting it close, so huh. I'm gonna have. Well, I get eight days the first year, and then I accrue so many vacation hours that day too. It's just I'm gonna be like borderline out of time. But I, I, I told my boss, I was like I'm going, I don't care. <laughs> it's all it's all continuing education, isn't it? Yeah, some of it's education, some of it's uh, collaborating, so we can kind of grow some things around here in Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. Um, you know, embrace more people involved and, you know, uh, spread the word of what we do. That's really my main goal, man, is to highlight, you know, people like us out here fixing stuff and doing everything we do. It, it, it's a cool job and a lot of people don't know about it. So it's like Brian, he's suckered into it now. He's not going anywhere. Nah, nah. I, it, I like it's it. Fun. Yeah. I think you're, I think you'll, I think it's not, uh, I don't know. I look, you know, I worked in house, I worked commercial, um, commercial, service and whatnot and you know i compare working in-house and then i worked for a company that just did h um, cold side and then then i went to commercial hot and cold side and i'm just way happier with the with the variety of things i do each day that you can become really good at and it's it's always something different every single day you know it's you know i'm, I'm sure you can, i'm sure you can be stay occupied and busy just doing hvac or refrigeration but I do like, you know, I'm not a master at anything, but I do like being able to walk into a restaurant, go upstairs for an, uh, an HVAC unit, an RTU, fix that, come back downstairs. Oh, by the way, you know, is there anything else not working? Oh, well, we need to call like a hot side guy to look at our fryer. I'm like, oh, no, I can look at that for you. I can take care of that. Oh, well, our ice machine's not working. Well, I can take a look at that too. Well, this is not working. I can take a look at that too. You know, so in that position you're in, you're going to learn everything. I, I I doubt you're just doing hot side, right? Are you going to do? No, I'm doing everything. Everything, right? So you're full blown. Yeah. So that's, that makes you, you know, if you were hot before, you're really hot now. You know, that that's the skill set that you're picking up. And, and, you know, like you said, sequence of operations, if you understand a power source, whether it's gas, electric, steam, water, whatever it is, and you understand it needs power. It needs an on switch. It needs to perform an action, whether that's heating up, pressing, moving, hydraulics, pneumatics, whatever it is. And then there's a finished product at any point at those time in that sequence that something acts up, your issue is probably where it acted up. So if you can diagnose any piece of equipment, whether it's cold side, if you apply the same logic and theory for um, sequence of operations, you can figure it out no matter what it is. Yeah, trace and voltage, you know, finding out where you're losing your power at and not to change the subject, but, uh, you know, you, Jason, Pat and, and Rich, uh, you always, when this podcast first come out and stuff, I mean, it always piqued my interest. And so I just wanted to let you know whether it means anything or not. You guys have a hand in where I'm at right now. A hundred percent. That does. We and I know that make Pat feel good. That That's great. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. I was going to ask you, you know, how you got hooked up with Matt and the team over there? Did you see him on here? Did you just run into him on LinkedIn? Or did you talk to somebody and they point you that direction? I know you uh, were in the live stream um, when we had Matt on, because I remember you asking about, you know, if you covered your area and where you were from and stuff. So how did that um, how that all come about? Well, that's that was like our first interaction, uh, finding out, because I didn't even know the company was even in, West Virginia, because their main office is only like two hours away from me. Um, you know, I was at CoolSys, and you know, Rich has my phone number and and stuff. And uh, 
Rich sent me a text and said, hey, Matt's needing a guy. He said, what part of this? Do you live near Clarksburg? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like two minutes outside of the city. And he's like, well, Matt's needing a guy up in that area. He said, would it be okay if I gave you his phone number? I'm like, yeah. And so me and Matt talked, and I, I really I liked what he had to say. I liked him. I knew he was a stand-up guy from when he was on on his podcast. And, uh, you know, it just, the rest is history, I guess. Is that That's how we, you know, we kind of uh, got together. And God puts you in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, that's, and definitely I'm in the right place. Um, that, you know, there's no micromanaging or anything like that. Um, I, I, I'm just, I like it. I, I do. I, I really, I really like it. Am I comfortable with everything? No. But there's a difference between liking something and being comfortable with it. Like I said before, growth hurts. You know, it's, you, growth is painful, but necessary. So this is, uh, yeah, this is just me growing, you know, and, and being able to fix stuff, help a customer out. Um, not all of them you want to help out because some of them can be <laughs> real characters. Um, you know, it's just that is what it is. I'm not talking bad about anybody, but, you know, there's a, there's more good people in the restaurant industry and the hospitality industry than there is bad. So. Yeah, you'll get those managers that are just a pain in the butt, man. And the best piece of advice if you get a manager like that is don't feed that, man. They want that interaction. They want you to react so they can use it against you. Um, take as much as you can. If you can't take it, quietly pack your stuff up and leave and watch the situation change in your favor real fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the advice. notes. And the notes. I And I told, I told Matt, I said, listen. If you want me to not write novels, you're going to have to tell me because I'm going to write novels. I'm going to write exactly what I did. And he's like, no, no. He said, I, I want, he said, I want that. I want as much information. I said, okay, you, you're, you're, you know, you may, you may change your mind later. Uh-oh. That was fast. Huh? I never seen anybody come back that fast. <laughs> Hmm. I think it's West Virginia, like you said earlier. <laughs> the, the notes, the notes are key, man. That's uh, Jason's favorite thing is technical storytelling. Mm. I think he uh, coined that catchphrase. Um, oh my goodness, I can't tell you how more is more, not less. Uh, I always say that as well. More is more, not less. And I appreciate technical notes. I appreciate doing technical auditing, and I've been doing that as of late. Where I tell a store, "Hey, are you?" You know, they're like, "Man, I feel like." there's all these visits on this one piece of equipment and it just keeps going down and we keep getting charged and they just keep coming back. I'm like, cool. Send me the last, you know, send me what you got in a time frame that you feel uncomfortable with. And I'll do a technical audit. I'll read those and I'll, I'll pull, I, I sent an email recently where I added up, I put all the different work orders and then I put my spiel in there asking what's going on here. This is what's going on. This, 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 according to your technician, you know, they found, this, this, and this, but there's no mention of an underlining issue. There's no, you know, and they're just like, yeah. So more is more because what? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to call your supervisor and ask what's going on. Then they're going to call you. Then they're going to, then you're going to have to put together an email or revise your notes. And then it's going to get back to me. And at the end of the day, we've all wasted each other's time. Mm -hmm. So you're on the clock you know, you do your work, you go sit in your van, you call manufacturers, you call parts houses, you get part numbers, you put together quotes. That's all time that's on the clock. You know, so at the end of the day, you're getting paid to sit in your truck or whatever you're doing to put these notes together. I don't care how long the story is. It covers your butt. And the next person who comes behind you, it's, it's, it's professional courtesy. It's very courteous for the next technician to be able to go back and see what you did and not guess. Um, there's nothing worse than me going out on a call on a Friday night in in the past and finding out that several people were on this before. And I'm reading notes just to find out, you know, I found when I first started, I was upset because I was like, man, I have some legitimate callbacks that no one caught. 
because too much time had gone by. And I went to my supervisor. I'm like, man, this would have been a great teaching opportunity because I don't want to continue to do the wrong thing. But if I put my notes in and then another tech comes in and does the does a job and then it goes down again, another tech, I'll come back six months later and be like, oh, well, it's good. I worked on this last six months ago. And then I open up the work order and I see that there was all these other techs that were there. I'm like, crap. And I'm reading their notes, doing a technical audit. I'm like, well, geez, the first thing I did, it, it gave me gave me results that made me feel that, hey, this is good to go. But you know, you learn from good notes. If they didn't have good notes, when I went back and looked for the last six months, by reading their notes, I learned what I did wrong that I didn't do right and that they did the right thing over time. And you, you know, you notes are good. It doesn't just help you for their future reference, but it helps other technicians. It helps the warranty people be able to decipher whether or not it's a warranty or not. You know, l- less is not more. More is more. On the notes thing, I have a hard time. People actually believe notes that someone's gone in and like their notes were so generic and bland. It didn't make sense one bit, you know, why they changed parts X, Y, and Z. Then they go back and write some elaborate 20 page story. I'm like, I don't believe none of this. (laughs) I'm like, you can write, you remember all this uh, six weeks later, but you couldn't have wrote this day you were there. I don't believe this. This is bullshit. Oh, after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. When you get called out and they're like, what happened? Then you want to go and be elaborate. No, put that junk down the first time, you know, and and again, it's about not wasting your time and just helping the next person. And I put, I put detailed notes because just like I take photos of everything before, during, and after since college, since tech school, um, it wasn't just to cover my butt. It was to go back and, you know, because when I first started, I didn't understand the difference between the colors in the thermostat wire. I didn't understand why what wire went to an infinity switch in a in a hot well so i took photos and i just did everything wire for wire i lit when i first started at my first job i'd literally be on my back looking at an infinity switch um changing them and i'd have a, a sharpie pen and they're they're white insulated wires because it's a hot well and i'd that wire number one i'd put one this wire two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks, six. And then I'd take a photo and then I'd come back and then I'd put those back the way I marked them. I did it. And then later on down the road, when I had an opportunity to actually get some more schooling or, or, you know, more industry, more field related stuff, because yeah, I got all the textbooks from, from tech school laying back there. A lot of that stuff, you know, it's in one ear, out the ear, you know, you're trying to get this turned over and then you know, I went to a Cefesa class. I did the um, water, gas, electric, and steam. I did for a week and a half, and and you know, I'm not ashamed to say it, it was probably six years in. You know, and they broke down on a little diagram exactly what switch does what what male uh, what feet what male spade, spade connector on the infinity switch meant what light L1 L2. You know, it. I just didn't take the time because I was doing so much and kept on moving. But then I was just like, man, you know, it's, this is why I take photos. This is why I document. This is why I put it there because I can go back and look at it later. You know, I don't need to do it now because I figured it out. But without that, I would have been shocking myself, shorting things out or being a, a menace, <laughs> you know? So it, it is good, I, to put good notes. Yeah. And I take I, I, another thing I do too is with pictures, I try to make them as detailed as possible, uh, and then I can look back at um, I can look at the picture, pull up the wiring, the schematic, and uh, be able to. Okay, let me follow this wire back. I'll do it wire for wire when I'm you know doing something that I'm not familiar with, and then I can take the picture and I can compare the picture to the schematic, and then I can trace that back and be like, okay, well. Okay, that goes, okay, I, I know why that goes on that specific terminal, and that goes on that specific terminal. Yeah, that that, that helps out Absolutely. a lot. There's a, there's, a, there's a chain of grocery stores that has a, I'll say, nameless brand of combi ovens. I won't get into it. And um, this grocery store like running their voltage super high. Like I don't, it's just, I don't know where they got the transformers, but they're like over 500 volts. Well, these elements are European, so they're rated at 440. So 500 volts is over 10. percent They heat really well, but the problem is they don't last very long. No, they burn themselves out. 
No, it, uh, the whole wiring marking thing, I'd take white high temp tape and put on the black wires and I'd do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. And then I had a little schematic drawn and I like, I just rip all the wires off there because I changed this one like seven times, dude, until it hit me a, a 500 volt rated element. And I just changed them all. And dude, there's still a schematic. I opened the panel up and it's been six years and there's still that schematic I drew on the side panel of that oven inside there. You know, oh, and, and, and another piece of equipment when you're, I just popped in my head that you're talking about that I like work on. Um, I like working on Mary Chef. You sick bastard. You, you must be just disturbed. Ooh. Yeah, I, <laughs> man, Dude, I know you should be, I be getting paid a hundred bucks an hour if somebody finds yeah. a maniac like you. I Just don't, saying. I don't mind working. I don't mind working on them, and it might be because it was my first couple calls I hit were Mary Chef warranty calls, and you know, uh, I went through the training on that, and I just, I don't know, I, I like them. They're, you know, they're, they're not bad. I haven't had training, so I'll, I'll blame it on that. Okay. <laughs> Man, I'm looking through my phone right now for Mary Chef. Oh my goodness, I got the I got the go no go schematic, the the diagram. <laughs> it, it gets so deep. Um, <laughs> I'm not even. I got I got PTSD from that. I'm not even want to talk about it. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> dude. If you can get good at Mary Chef's uh, Turbo Chef, the Menu Masters, if you can get good at those Turbo food, Chef. Oof. You can get good at those speed ovens. You could probably make it. You could probably name your price, man. <laughs> yeah, they're. I mean, they're they're easy. They mm -hmm. really are easy because it's all, you know, just transformers. Uh, that can the, kill you. Well, that's what you have the meter for. <laughs> well, that could kill you. <laughs> you on one side of the transformer, that was the bad thing. Yeah, I had a guy try that. Uh, like two months ago, I walked in the. He was in our warehouse, and he was like, "I was like, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm working on this turbo chef." I'm like, "Cool." I'm like, "What are you checking?" Oh, I'm checking voltage on the high voltage side. I was like, "The fuck you are!" <laughs> I was like, "I was like, I went to my boss. Like, don't let him touch that. Tell him to leave." <laughs> I was like, "You see those silicon leaves? They're ready for like 600 or 1,000 volts. That's 4,000 volts. That's not your meter's not gonna like that. Your hands not gonna like that. Your heart's not gonna like that." And the diodes, you got to make sure you know the diodes. One hole's bigger than the other. The bigger hole is your ground. That big hole goes down. You know, it's... I can see Brian giving a class here in a few years. The uh, Mary Chef, uh, Turbo Chef Guru. That's what's up, man. That's the that's, only see, thing... That's something that scares people, and you All like right. it. See, that's, that's what this is about, where one person is just like, ooh, brother, ooh. You know? Well, <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like... That that kind of voltage never scared me. It hasn't. Uh, I'm cautious, but I'm not scared of it. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a hobby of I'm in amateur radio, and I've worked on a lot of older equipment, which used, it was hybrid. It would use vacuum tubes and solid state technology. Well, I mean, some of those transformers that powered those vacuum tubes you're talking 12, 1500 volts on them, you know? And so I learned how to work with those and, and be safe. It, it, but I, I mean, to each their own, like you know, some people like to jump out of planes. I don't, I don't see the reason to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you there. That's funny. <laughs> so, Brian, I want to give you some advice, and this is to anybody who works on commercial cooking equipment. This is something I, you know, maybe maybe Pat did this in his novice days. I'm sure he doesn't now. But something that I found at Home Depot, two things that I absolutely love from Home Depot. They have a six-pack of um, electrical tape that has like six different colors, black, yellow, red, green, blue, um, whatever. Those are amazing for marking wires. So if I had to, so for instance, when I first started, I did, um, and I was working on old, old, old FMs, um, that were way older that started with, uh, you know, I'm not gonna go there, but, um, really old. So about time I got to it and the wiring, the six wires out of the heating element that go into the, con um, the contactor box, there is no longer a eight pin, nine pin connector. There or a 12 pin connector there. It's, wired right through the box 
and wire nut it in there. So you never know which, which one is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would use that tape. And even better than that, in the electrical, um, the electrical department of Lowe's or Home Depot, they have this booklet of stickers and it's one through whatever. And then it comes out with two pieces. You can wrap, fold them around the wire and you can re-number. You can- I like sorry. thunder. Yeah, it is. Can you hear it? Yeah, like, I heard it. Yeah, it was close. Let me look outside. Um, those numbers. So between the electrical, the different color electrical tape, which is cheap, you can get them a little pack of six and the, the little booklet that looks like a little, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm your driving instructor. I'm gonna write you up a little booklet. Um, that with those numbers, those two things will help you when you're dealing with a lot of different wires in different places that some gal or guy just cut out and wire nutted and didn't, wasn't considerate enough to remark these. Oh, I that appreciate my, that's my, that. That's my hint, but it's cheap. It's at Home Depot. You can use it on anything for numbering or coloring coding. I've seen that sticker book that you're referring to. Yeah, that's it's worth uh, having one. It's worth just throw one in the truck. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That'll give me something to spend money on tomorrow. I always like going to depot anyways. Um, I did, and I started, uh, I've done two conveyor ovens. Uh, they're not bad. Now, the one that I did was, I'm trying to remember the brand. It's a big guy. Gosh, I can't remember the, bank, the brand, but it was throwing a hall sensor fault. And I had to change the belt motor on it. And then last night, this is <clears throat> this is a funny story. I had to go to a local college. Uh, it was a overtime approved call. It was for a Lincoln, well, small Lincoln conveyor oven, and uh, it tripped the high limit. Found out that the morning guy, I, and this is where it pays to know how to qualify customers to kind of get them to tell you what they did without them realizing they told you what they did kind of thing and here they had turned the unit on and turned the unit off enough to where the heating it started heating up but it did uh, the the blower motor hadn't yet kicked on so what it did was that heat had no way to dissipate because it didn't have the blower motor to blow it to dissipate it so it tripped the high limit on it I'm in the middle of working on this and um, I, I still, I, I have PTSD from this because <laughs> I'm in the middle of working this and all of a sudden the dining room lights and the outlet that this was plugged into went like it went dark. I didn't short anything out. I don't, you know, it's, but the weird thing is, is they had two, of the same plugs and they were within five feet of each other. So I got the meter out and that one on the bottom had voltage. So I, you know, I'm, I'm here. I have my headlamp on working in the dark, trying to put this thing back together and they got their maintenance. And we, I don't know if they ever figured it out or not, but it's, yeah, that was, that was very interesting. And I'm not a fan of flat of, of, uh, slotted screws. I don't like them. There's no place in this world for slotted screws. Are you saying where a flathead is used? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I think everything should have a hex head on it. Just give me a chance. Oh, I think everything has <laughs> an Allen key head in it. Well, this, yeah, the the screws, and it come from the factory because I downloaded the manual and I, you know, looked through the parts list because I'm like, has somebody been screwing with this thing? But no, it. <laughs> The con where the control panel is, where the solid state relay is, and contactor and all that stuff, it's held in by four slotted or flathead screws. That took me longer to get those screws in than it did anything because there's no way to hold that on there. So I'm taking my big old sausage fingers and that little screw and I'm trying to get that threaded in so it'll stay in there. So then I can take my screwdriver and I'm like, yeah, slotted screws. No, man, you haven't worked on any ice cream machines then, because they're almost all. A lot of them are are slotted screws. It makes no sense. No, no, uh, I don't. And most of them that I found like that are are stainless steel screws. So, but, 
At yeah. worst comes to worst, if I have too much issue with it, I take some black tape, sticky side up, put the screw through the black tape, then I wrap the black tape around my shaft of my screwdriver, and then, you know, that holds it in there, and then I get the screw almost all the way tight, and then I can pull the black tape off and then run the screw in. It's just, I, I think when you have to rig things up and, you know, I, ha I had this um, – this frappe machine that had these that had these screws down there and, and they had little they were little quarter inch hex screws and i was telling the technician i was like well you're gonna have to take a to put those back in there you're gonna have to take a piece of paper put it inside the socket put the screw in there then you can get i'm like why did they make it where you have to re-engineer stuff to get stuff done everything should be simple you know if it's yeah. a phillips it should be a, a number three <laughs> you know yeah uh, stuff like that so or what's even worse is on the uh the uh, true refrigerators the door closure it has the 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 closure up top the spring loaded closure and it has that little set screw that's slotted that's where i learned the tape trick at is it's little screw that's slotted and you screw that in once you load that spring up yeah and you know, I I learned the tape trick from that after shooting three or four or probably five or more of those little screws. Cross. I think I'd have it in there and it. Yeah, you'd let go and then all of a sudden it'd be like, ding, I'm wearing my glasses and I hear the screw bounce off my lens and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, man, I hope there's no customers around. You know, oh, I kind love of it. Thing. I love it. <laughs> Dude, I hate them stupid door closers, man. Yeah, and, uh, and your car jack. The car, your vehicle jack for if you had to change a tire, works awesome for putting one of those doors on and holding it on, holding it up there so that you can, you know, run the the hinge screws in. That's that's creative. I I don't know if you work on any clamshell grills, but if you have to change those wheels out, you can get yourself a nineteen nine uh, nineteen dollar ninety nine cent or a twenty nine ninety nine. Um, floor jack that you use for a car i don't know how many tons that is but i run that sucker underneath the grill or not not even just that i'll use that on dressing tables the length of the restaurant get it up there you can change your wheel you can change your casters out it's mm -hmm. and it, every chevy van i had that little that little jack would always the two double doors on the side it would always sit in that first step and, and mm -hmm. i just hear every time i stop i'd hear it go, rrr, doosh, rrr, doosh, rrr, doosh, for years and it's like oh man well, see, it, there, every problem has a solution. Absolutely. Every problem has a solution. You have to think outside of the box sometimes. You know, uh, if there wasn't a solution, there would be no problems. True. You know, it's kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I sometimes I'm like, man, uh, I just got to redneck engineer this to make it work. I don't care how it looks as long as it, it's done right. You know what I mean? The end result is is what matters. How you get to the mm -hmm. end result, you know, it's it's that's up for interpretation, I guess. Brian, are you going to AHR this year? Or are you going to be able to make it down? It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to make it down. I wanted to because I want to meet all you guys in person, kind of hang out and stuff like that. Probably not going to be able to make AHR. So well, it's free, but you know, lodging and all that other crap, but. And just putting it out there. I don't. Um, oh, it's not a money. It's not a money thing. Um, time thing. Yeah, just you know. No, I don't want to use up my vacation, and I got some stuff that yeah. planned up. Well, I mean, I don't mind using up my vacation, but I I don't know how that's going to fall in with other people's vacation and that sort of thing. I mean, it wouldn't be bad because they do direct flights from Orlando from my local airport, so it's. Like I like two hundred dollars for a round trip ticket, and it's what two and a half hours. So yeah, no, if I if, if I can swing it, I at least maybe stop down not the full time, but I try to do maybe yeah. Two if you days, can catch but. a day or two, um, the Monday and the Tuesday are the most for AHR the most busiest Wednesday. Everyone's packing up, but they're at, everyone who came to the show who brought all their stuff is trying to save money on not having to take all their stuff back so they give away all the swag and all everything they try to dump it out on whoever's still around on wednesday uh pat and i will be doing a podcast um monday tuesday wednesday at 10 a.m 
Uh, we're going to see a lot of good friends. We'll be hanging out with uh, Megan and Matt from Mechanical Environments mm -hmm. out of Colorado. Uh, we're going to see a lot of people. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's very educational. It's a great place to network. Uh, if you don't do that one, um, there's other things coming up throughout the year. If you once you do put in a little bit of PTO and let your your bosses know that this is con considered continuing education and whatnot, it's all business related. And if they don't say screw it, I'll just pay for it myself. I've done it in the past and it's worth it every time. It actually almost feels better. Oh, well, it hurts, but it feels better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's one thing I can say about Matt. Anything, any training, anything training related. It's like that man of walk class that I took today. It's I was like, you know, it costs money to go to it. But I asked him, he's like, yeah, he said, send him, send a, a text to the office girl. And her name's Kelly. Send it to Kelly and get it, get registered for it. So I was like, cool beans. Of course, all dispatchers are named Kelly. It seems like <laughs> I, I know yes. at least two. Yes, but th this this Kelly is uh, she's a sweetheart. I, I love it when I get to talk to her. Yeah. Yep, Megan, Matt, we are looking forward to it. Heck yeah. So, all right. Well, I won't keep you guys any longer. I just wanted to bring Brian on and talk about his change of career. Um, I think it's the second time we've done a change of career episode for Brian. <laughs> Hopefully, it's the last time he stays on our side. Um, but he's over at Red uh, Inc. or the Red LLC right now. Um, LLC, yeah. Red LLC in West Virginia. Matt Brunty and his brother Jared. Um, those are two guys who are trying to make a difference uh, in the technicians' lives and in their customers' lives. And uh, I think they found a good fit with Mr. Uh, Brian Sanders here. So, Brian, you want to tell everybody where they can find you at if you want to give up any information before we get out of here? Yeah. Uh, my main hangout is usually Instagram. Um, that's where you get – I'm on that daily. Uh, and I even made it easy. My name tag, I have my, my Instagram handle. It's uh, 304 underscore H-V-A-C-R underscore. Um, I'm on Facebook from time to time, uh, not regularly, and that's just Brian Sanders, just how it's spelled on the screen. Um, and I've been doing a little bit more on LinkedIn also. I like the professional uh, aspect of LinkedIn, and I'm Brian Sanders there. So if you're on LinkedIn, you can shoot me a... a Shoot me a uh, uh, invitation or whatever. I can't remember what they're called, and I'll accept. Connection. <laughs> yeah, connection. That's it. And I'll put a link to all Brian's social media stuff out there. Uh, Brian's a really good guy. He's uh, super nice, super humble. Um, and I'm looking forward to you know talking to Brian some more about some um, kitchen stuff. He he messaged me with some fryer stuff. I'm sure he's gonna get in some more stuff. He'll reach out to us on, and uh, I look forward to seeing Brian grow and see what he can do for uh, our little side of the industry. Yeah, and I appreciate, like I said, you guys really started this journey for me. So kudos to you guys. Um, yeah, and what you do for our, in our the food service industry. I won't say the industry. <laughs> yeah, so. so foods, yeah, yeah. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you, and I'm gonna get off here. Let's have a good night, guys. See you guys later. See you guys. We appreciate you making it to the end of the show. If you would. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and rate and review the podcast. It really helps us grow and helps us know which direction to take it. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles podcast, reach out to myself, Jason, or Rich, or email Pat at Commercial Kitchen Chronicles, or DM us. Easiest way to do it. We appreciate your support, and have a good night.